Welcome to the Linux Classroom. Today we're going to walk through one of our IoT labs where we are going to install PL apps onto our Raspberry Pi. So let's jump in and begin. First, you need to log into Net Academy, find our classroom. Our class is right there. We're going to go ahead and launch our classroom as we normally do. Once we get into the classroom, we need to download some software. We need to download two applications. We need to download the launcher, which will actually burn and create our SD card image. And we need to download the actual image that we're going to put on the card. So let's go ahead. Once you're logged into the class, go over to the right hand side and click resources, student support and resources. And from there, you'll have several downloads here. The ones that we want to look at here first is the PL App Launcher for Windows. So go ahead, click on that, and download that program. You just click on it. Should take you down here. Use it for Windows or Mac. Go ahead and download it right here. You can download it and then install it. The other thing that you need to download is the PL image for our connecting things. So this is a zip file right here. Um, actually, we want this second one here for the Raspberry Pi 4. So we're looking to download this zip image. You just go ahead and click on it. It downloads it. Remember where you save it, right? I would just save it on your desktop or to your downloads folder or something like that. This is the actual name of the file itself, this en. IOTF, CT 2.0, yeah, right, such and such, all the way here. This is the actual name of the file and the zip file that you download. Once you download those two applications and that image file, we're ready for the next step. Once we've downloaded the software from Netacad, now it's time to uh, create the image on our SD card and write the software to the SD card and put it on there. So what we need is our SD card and our SD card reader. We can take off this plastic protector there and we can take our SD card and we need to flip it over where I believe it goes in this way. Yeah, just like that. So where these metal connectors are facing up. So we have the writing here and then on the side, there's a lower slot right there that we're going to put that in. We're going to put that in right there and make sure that these metal connectors are facing up like they are here and it should just slide in fairly smoothly. If you if you put it in this way, you'll get some resistance. It will go in kind of crooked like that, but don't force it if it's going like that. See, the writing on the card needs to be flipped upside down and just make sure it goes in the right way. That way we don't break this card, right? Now, once this is inserted into the SD card reader, go ahead and plug it into your laptop or computer. With the SD card reader plugged into your laptop or computer, find out which drive the SD card reader is showing up as. And in my case, it's showing up as like the D drive or something like that. It could be E drive or F drive or something like that in Windows and whatever's comparable to, to your Mac if you're using a Mac. Then we need to launch that PL app launcher, which I show here on the screen that we downloaded from Netacad. So once you've downloaded that and installed that first exe file, not the zip file, we're leaving that zipped and alone, you should have something that looks like what is on the screen right now. So go ahead and uh, for number one here, when we have the app open, we make sure that the SD card that we just put in with the SD card reader is identified by the proper letter drive. So in this case, it's drive D when I plug in the USB card reader. Next, what we need to do for number two is we need to click on browse. We click on browse and we find that zip file that we downloaded with the really long name that we got from starting with EN. Uh, we need to find that. So you go ahead and you click browse, you find that file, you click on it and you add it right here. Next, we need to name our device. So the recommended naming convention should be your MCC username, which is the first part of your email, MCC email, then a dash, then my RPI, standing for my Raspberry Pi right there. Then we're going to put a password on this. This password will allow us to access the website that will be run from the Raspberry Pi. The password um, look in your lab instructions. 
should be password with a capital P, not a lowercase p like you see here, capital P A S S W zero for the O R D. That way we stay consistent. We don't forget it. It's the same. It's not very secure, but it's very practical for the lab and limits some complexity. Enter the correct password. Now here, this is where things get different and where you need to be very careful. For number four, we need to connect this to your home Wi-Fi. You need to have a home Wi-Fi for us to be able to connect to the website that will be running on this Raspberry Pi. So the first thing you need to do is you need to put in your Wi-Fi SSD or your Wi-Fi name. So if you go on to your Android phone or your iPhone and you look at what your Wi-Fi connection name is, that's what you put right there. For my home, it is called Bernard, my last name with a capital B. Make sure when you type in your Wi-Fi home name, that SSID, that you are including uppercase, lowercase, that is exactly the way it's being broadcast on your phone or your laptop. Uh, this is really important if you want this to be able to connect to your home Wi-Fi connection. Then you need to put in your Wi-Fi password. This is your Wi-Fi password for your home, right? I don't know what that is. Only you know what that is. If you don't know what it is, ask somebody so you can figure that out. That needs to be entered in exactly because then it can't connect and it won't be able to connect to the network. You won't get an IP address and this will not work. Once you have all this information filled out, so we click on write disk image and that will create and install the operating system onto our SD card for ready to use. That will take a few minutes to, to write. It will take probably several minutes. I don't know, up to five minutes or so to do that depending on the speed of your computer. Once we have done that, you safely unplug the USB from your computer make sure you do that in a safe fashion and then you once you have it unplugged like this we're going to take out the SD card and we're going to get our Raspberry Pi here and we're going to flip it upside down and you'll see this little metal slot here this is where the SD card goes and again with the Raspberry Pi upside down we have the card we have these metal connectors. We're going to flip that over. So the metal connectors will be touching the green circuit board. That's what we want to do. We don't want to force that in either. So we're going to go ahead and put this into the slot right here. We're going to gently push that in, but make sure that it's seated and it should look something like this once the SD card is inserted into the slot right there on the Raspberry Pi. And now we're ready for the next step. The next thing we need to do is we need to grab our USB to TTL connector and its corresponding wires that we're going to be using and our Raspberry Pi. We need to connect this to the Raspberry Pi with these wires. This will allow us to connect the Raspberry Pi to our computer and through a terminal see if it boots up correctly and also get the IP address. So that's the purpose of this. The first thing we need to do is we need to get this USB to TTY connector. Notice the pins here along the top. What we're looking for, each pin has a name. If you look right here, it says ground or GND. Then right next to it, it should have RXD and then TXD. We want these three inner pins are the ones that we are going to be using. Now, we will grab our wires here, and it doesn't matter which wires and colors you use, just make sure that you are paying attention to which wire is connected to what. So what I'm going to do, I have four wires here, but I'm actually only going to be connecting three of them. So I'm going to take uh, the green one, just because that is the one to the left, and I'm going to plug it into the one that says ground, or G. N D. I know that's getting a little blurry, so I don't know if the camera's picking that up. So I'm going to put the green one there, but you can put any color you want there. Make sure it's seated fairly well. Then the next one, the very middle pin, is RXD. That's to receive transmissions. And I'm just, since the yellow one is the very next one, I'm just going to put that one right there and make sure it clips on fairly good. 
And then the one right after that is TXD for transmit. So I'm going to just do the orange one and I'm going to attach that one just like that. So that's what that should look like. When you connect it, this red one here, I don't need the fourth one. So that one doesn't really matter. I'm just going to leave that off to the side and unplugged. As long as we have these three, make sure you identify each wire color because we're going to now take the other side of these wires and we are going to plug this in to our Raspberry Pi. Now our Raspberry Pi has corresponding pins along right here. So let's go ahead and show you that. Now you have the same image in your documentation for your lab. Notice how the pins here correspond with different types of functions. So if you look here at the top pins on the right side, the right row, which corresponds with this row here, these pins here, you have the five volts, which we don't need, another five volt, and then we have our ground, which is the third pin over. Then we have our TXD right here, which is the fourth pin over, indicated in a purple dot here. That's for transmission. And then we have our RX, receive pin, which is right here, which is also in purple. So we're going to be using these three pins, or over here, these three pins on our Raspberry Pi to connect to our USB to TTL connector here. So let's go ahead and go back to our overhead camera. And we see here, so the image kind of showed it like this. So it should be uh, this third pin right here is our ground, this should be our receive, this should be our transmit. So let's go ahead, I'm going to rotate this around, so make sure that we got this right. So if we look here, we have our ground, which I have as a green wire. So I'm going to take this green wire here, and I'm going to put that on the third pin, which is our ground, and pin it just like that. Okay, now this is where things get tricky, or not very tricky, but um, just a little bit different. You would expect that you would put the RXD to the RXD on here, but you don't. You reverse them. The receive goes to the transmit over here, and the transmit here goes to the receive here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take this yellow wire, which is connected to my receive which is RXD that's what it's labeled here that's what the yellow wire is labeled and I'm going to plug that one into the Raspberry Pi corresponding one that's indicated as TXD for transmit so we're swapping the receive and the transmit between the two devices so now this yellow one on this side is the receiving end, while this side is the transmission end on the Raspberry Pi. Then we're going to take this orange one, which over here is indicated as TXD, uh, which is our transmit, which is the orange one that I have indicated. Your colors may be different. And I'm going to take this orange one, and I'm going to put that onto the fifth pin here, which is our receive there. So on a Raspberry Pi, the TXD orange one, at least mine's orange, should go to the fifth pin over here on the Raspberry Pi. And now we have this connected. Now, without powering on the Raspberry Pi, we're not putting the power onto the Raspberry Pi, we are now going to take this USB and we're going to plug this into our computer. The LED light on our USB connector here should light up. That will show us that we are getting power to it and that it is connected to our Raspberry Pi. Again, don't plug in your Raspberry Pi yet because we need to go to the next step. The next thing we need to do is we need to download PuTTY. PuTTY is our terminal program that's going to allow us to connect to our Raspberry Pi and watch it boot up. So go to the link. The link here is here on the screen, but it is also linked in your lab um, documentation as well. So go to the link to download PuTTY. You'll be taken to this page. Uh, you don't need to download this MSI 
go down here to the alternate binary files. This putty exe, just download this first one, the 64-bit.x86, and just download this putty exe. I would recommend that you just download it to your desktop. Your desktop is probably the best place for it. So go ahead and download it there. I have already downloaded and installed it. This is what PuTTY looks like once it's open. Mine is in a black theme here. Yours may not be in dark mode like mine is, and it may look a little different. This is the Linux version of it. Some of the buttons may be laid out just slightly differently or something like that, but all the functions and features should be the same. Once you have downloaded PuTTY, go ahead and click on that exe file that you downloaded. There's no install process. It should just open up to what you see here. C click on serial, and then we need to find the correct COM port that your USB to TTL is plugged into. Now make sure that your USB to TTL is plugged into your computer at this time so that we can find it. So the first thing we need to do is search for device manager. You just go down to your little uh, magnifying glass there, type in device manager in Windows. You should get a prompt here that says device manager and that will open up your device manager in Windows. This is what device manager should look like in Windows. You'll see a lot more options here. I've kind of zoomed into the part that's important. What we're doing is we're looking for ports. COM and LPT ports is what we're looking for. Plug in your USB to TTL. That's the thing that's connected to your Raspberry Pi with those wires that we just connected in. And you should see that there and it should be identified as COM1, COM2, COM3, COM4, COM5, COM something. Should be one of those. And you should see that. You can actually unplug the USB to TTY and you should see it disappear. If you're unsure like which one it is, of these ports that are listed here, then just go ahead and plug it while you have device manager open. You should see it disappear and then plug the USB to TTL back into your computer and you should see it reappear there. Once you have the correct COM port, so go ahead and open up PuTTY once we have the correct COM port and we need to find the serial set setting here along the left side menu. So here, it's down here towards the bottom, it says serial and we need to fill in this information so that we can connect to our Raspberry Pi. With your USB to TTL plugged in to your computer, but make sure your Raspberry Pi is not powered on yet, that you haven't plugged in the power to it yet, put in the correct COM port here at the top. It could be COM1, COM2, COM3, COM4, COM5, whatever, depending on your computer. Once you've found that, we're gonna change this speed to 11, 5, 200. So 115200, our data bits is going to be 8, our stop bits is going to be 1, our parity should be none, and our flow control should be none as well. Make sure your settings are all correct. Double check your COM port if you need to. That's important. Once you have this set up, go ahead and click Open. When you click the Open button, the terminal will open, the terminal window will open up. You can resize the window if you like, like I'm doing here, just grabbing the corners and um, increasing the window size. It makes things easier to see. Now, there's not much to see though. It's just a black terminal screen. So now we need to go ahead and plug in our Raspberry Pi. So go ahead and give it some power. Plug in the power cable into the Raspberry Pi and the other end into an outlet so that your Raspberry Pi should start up. You will see uh, red and green lights flashing on your Raspberry Pi once it is powering up. Make sure your USB to TTL is plugged in as well. And in a few moments here, you should be able to see white text filling the terminal screen as we are right here. And there we go. This is our Raspberry Pi booting up. If you do not see this happening, then you need to go back and check your steps and troubleshoot a few things. Now, once your Raspberry Pi is completely finished rebooting, you'll be greeted with this happy little chestnut character holding a sign that says, I love Cisco. This means that your Raspberry Pi has finished booting. Now, what you should be looking for is an IP address. And when it first comes to this login screen or this login prompt, um, you, you will likely not see 
an IP address. Um, however, this little login prompt and, and message um, will refresh every few minutes, every 30 seconds to every minute or so. And if you're impatient like me and you want it to refresh and you still don't have an IP address, you can click Control D and that will auto refresh for you. But you need to have an IP address that I'm highlighting right there. Um, that's important. That shows that you connected to your home network. That way we can have an IP address so we can connect to the Raspberry Pi and bring up our web page that we need to bring up from the Raspberry Pi. So if that has not worked, you need to go back and troubleshoot your issues, particularly your configuration of how you configured your Wi-Fi and home network when you created the SD card. Remember there was a spot where you had to enter in the name of your home Wi-Fi wi and the password for that. So go back and review that if you haven't got an IP address. It will take up to about 30 seconds for you to get an IP address, but once you have that, you should be good. And once we have that IP address, go ahead and copy it, uh, remember it, it will likely, every time you boot up your Raspberry Pi in future labs, the IP address should be the same. For now, though, you can unplug your USB to TTL because you don't need it anymore. Um, we have the IP address, and we're going to put that IP address into a web browser. So I've opened up a web browser here. I'm also opening up our PuTTY terminal, and we need that IP address that we have from our Raspberry Pi and I'm going to enter that into the address bar of our browser. So go ahead and type that in. If you need to, you can go back and you can double check your putty and make sure that you're typing it in correctly. Click OK and there we go. You should be left with this prompt to log in. This is your Raspberry Pi. This is all running off your Raspberry Pi and you're connecting to it wirelessly through your home Wi-Fi connection. So you can go ahead and you can type a password. Now remember the password that we set up was capital P A S S W O or zero R D. That's capital P A S S W zero R D to log in. We set that up when we created our SD card image. Once you've successfully logged in, you have completed the lab. Congratulations. Uh, there are some links here and some activities that we can do on this web page, but that is for future labs. Um, I hope that this has been helpful for you and hope you have a great day.